Today we celebrate the liturgy for the third Sunday of Easter. Let us now give glory and praise to Almighty God as we sing our processional hymn, number 565, Lord of the Dance. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 3. sisters, as we come together to celebrate this Holy Eucharist on the third Sunday of Easter, ever thankful to God for giving us this opportunity, though uh, for most of you it is uh, through media, uh, through the internet, to participate in this Mass. Still, I thank the Lord that you are with us and that you join together with us throughout this Mass in prayer and in song, giving praise to the risen Lord. So as we begin our celebration of the Eucharist, let's pause for a moment now and recognize the Lord truly coming to us, truly present to us, ready to fill us with his life and with his love. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen now to God's holy word. None of the scripture readings during the seven-week Easter season are from the Old Testament, but the Acts of the Apostles, which is read every Sunday during Easter, frequently quotes Old Testament passages, which the early Christians saw as fulfilled in Jesus. Today's reading gives part of Peter's sermon at Pentecost. Peter quotes from Psalm 16 which, like most of the Psalms, was popularly thought to have been written by David. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let it be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope. You will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Even in the night my heart explores. 
towards you. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us a path of life. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption Lord you will show us the Show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show. The Christians for whom the first letter of Peter was written were recent converts from paganism. They found themselves a small minority in pagan surroundings. Their neighbors and local authorities made life miserable for them. Today's passage offers encouragement by reminding them that Jesus died and rose for them. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, and through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that they, while they were conversing and debating, 
Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him, they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was at, with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning inside us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures for us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, again, we thank you for joining us today, uh, whatever time, either live or uh, if you're watching it later on in the day, we're glad that you have chosen to participate in Mass in the ways that we can and join in the celebration of the third Sunday of Easter. I'd like to say that I'm getting a little more used to doing Mass with basically an empty uh, pew, many empty pews, mostly empty pews in front of me. And I hope even if I am, that... Uh, that doesn't last much longer. I'd rather, much rather, have all of you in front of me, those who are members of our parish and visitors uh, for Mass on Sunday, Saturday night, and those who come to daily Mass as well. One of the realities of celebrating Mass in this way with you at home is that I'm not as quick to ask questions like I normally do at the start of a homily, because you're not here to give answers, whether they be correct or incorrect answers. It's always interesting to hear uh, the responses when I put it out. However, today I'm going to ask a few questions at the beginning. Maybe those few who are with me will answer. If not, I hope you can answer them correctly at home. The first question is, who is currently the host of the game show Family Feud? 
I would imagine those who watch that show uh, could easily answer Steve Harvey. He has been host since the year 2010. What about who was the first host of Family Feud? Again, perhaps many of you who uh, have watched game shows over the years would be able to answer that. Richard Dawson, he was uh, the first host and indeed, uh, at this point anyway, the longest host of this long running TV show that debuted in 19, not, uh, excuse me, 1976. Okay, this is probably the hardest. Can you name how many, first of all, tell me how many others have hosted Family Feud over the years of its running on television? Well, the fact is, besides Steve Harvey and Richard Dawson, there have been four people who have hosted that show at various times. Their names, Ray Combs, Louis Anderson, Richard Karn, John O'Hurley. I have to admit, when I looked up those four names, uh, I had to find out more. Not only uh, pick, pull up their pictures, but I was drawn to look more deeply about uh, at least one of their lives, the one who replaced Richard Dawson, Ray Combs, who was on the show from 1988 to 1994. In so doing, I found out some good things about his life, besides the fact that he was the host of Family Feud for six years. He was married. He and his wife had six children. And he was successful for a number of years in the number of endeavors uh, that he got into. However, as I read more, I found out that his life was cut short. He died at the age of 38, and he died tragically from suicide. As his uh, life had uh, in many ways fallen apart, he and his wife had gotten divorced, his uh, fortunes, whatever money he had, had disappeared. He was in very deep depression at that time. I bring all that up as a prelude to talk about today's gospel. Because when you think of the two men on the way to Emmaus on the first day of the week, no doubt the day of the resurrection, there are certainly positive things and good things that by just reading or hearing this story come out. First of all, they were blessed to have Jesus walk with them, the risen Lord, and to reveal himself later on in their home in the breaking of the bread. And they were so excited about Jesus who they recognized and who they knew as the risen Lord now, they went back immediately, it says. That long seven mile trip back from Emmaus to Jerusalem to share their good news with the apostles. And no doubt in the future to share that good news with others that they purposely encountered in their life's journey. However, just like with Ray Combs, though not nearly as tragically as Ray Combs, these two disciples, if you find out more about them, especially through this story and ponder that and reflect upon that, we'll see some things that were not so good that happened uh, to these two men. First of all, it is clear at the beginning of the story that they had too soon abandoned hope. The hopes that they had of Jesus, it says here, was that he would be the one to redeem Israel. They had certain hopes 
that they believed were dashed, and they were quick to depart from Jerusalem, downcast, not hopeful, heading back to their home in Emmaus. Secondly, they also must discounted must have discounted reports that they had heard about Jesus, about the empty tomb, including the women who went to the tomb, saw a vision of angels, uh, but did not see the risen Lord. They did not believe in those reports that these women and others had encountered the risen Lord. And thirdly, they made not a very good choice that first day of the week. They left the community of believers and went back to their homes, maybe intending to go back to their former way of life. What they failed in is pause for us to consider our lives right now and in the future in terms of Jesus Christ. Are we hopeful? Are our hopes based on the things of this world? And some of those are good and we can pray for them. And yet some of our hopes, including a quick ending to this pandemic, are not perhaps reasonable. And yet we are called as people of faith who believe in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose from the dead, we're called to have a hope beyond what this world can offer. The hope that comes through Jesus Christ, that he will always be with us as he appeared to those two disciples and that he will come again in glory. We say that in every creed. And to realize our hope is well beyond this world. This hope, our hope, is that we will live forever with Jesus in his exalted glory in heaven. Secondly, the question is are we uh, announcing the good news of Jesus to others? Do we believe as those early first two disciples had a hard time believing that Jesus was risen and was alive. Do we believe in those who have testified, not only the apostles who testified to the point of shedding their blood and so many martyrs since then, do we believe in the testimony of people who have spoken in uh, faith in Jesus Christ as risen Lord and Savior, do we recognize in their encounters that Jesus is alive? And through our own encounters with Jesus, not only believe it, but share it with others. And finally, what about separating from the community of faith? They made the choice to lead their community of faith, at least for that short time, though they did return after recognizing Jesus in the word that he shared in the breaking of the bread. You who are watching this uh, on the internet or on television are in fact absent from the community, not because you want to, but because of, uh, for safety purposes uh, in the face of the corona virus. I've even heard from some people who have questioned, I wonder after this is over and we're able to come back to church, whenever that is, and we pray it will be soon, I wonder how many people will just stay at home. Maybe over these weeks they've gotten used to participating in mass uh, in this way. And they might say, hmm, this is just fine, what I'm doing right here at home every Sunday in the comfort of my uh, surroundings. What I would say to you, if at all you're thinking that, and to anyone and everyone, is don't be like these two disciples who initially chose to leave the community. You're not choosing to be away from this community, and I hope you will choose to come back 
We need one another. We need uh, to be together. People have told me, Father, I really miss Mass. I really miss the people. We need, as people of faith, to come together, to stay together and grow in our love for Jesus together, singing the songs of praise, responding to the prayers, and of course, very important, most important, receiving Jesus truly in his body and blood, soul and divinity at Mass. Something that you're, I know, missing right now. Something that you have to replace with a spiritual communion prayer. But something that you can, and I hope you do, look forward to coming back, to being with one another, to sharing in God's word proclaimed and preached, and receiving Jesus' body and blood, walking up with one another to profess your faith by saying, Amen. I believe and receiving Jesus into your bodies, into your minds, and into your hearts. Those apostles, or those disciples, were blessed. After today's gospel, when they went back to the apostles and others and told them, it says Jesus appeared to them. Jesus appeared to them and stayed with them a while, ate with them, and then, after sharing more of the word, he went, according to Luke's gospel, uh, went and bid them farewell. Read the rest of the gospel of Luke from that point on. It's certainly worthy of our reflection. And it reminds us of, for them, the blessings that came because they returned to their community. And the blessings that will be ours when we're able to be together again in person, together to encounter Jesus and the hope that only he can bring. I'd like to end uh, this homily with the verse, or excuse me, the refrain of a song I grew up with that reminds us of how precious this time that we spend with Jesus and with one another truly is. It's called Sons of God, and it goes, Sons of God, hear his holy word. Gather round the table of the Lord. Eat his body, drink his blood, and we'll sing a song of love. Allelu, 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 allelu. something for all of us to look forward to. We pray and we hope sooner than later. And let us stand now, please. And together, let us profess our faith through the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Just as the risen Lord came to those two disciples in Emmaus so long ago, he comes to us, especially in word and in sacrament, and is always ready to listen to our prayers and petitions. For the church, throughout this Easter season, may we grow in grace in the light of God's divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may have the spirit of humility to live as servant leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering, and for those unemployed, may the Lord of all hopefulness be their strength in their time of trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For caregivers and health care providers in this faith community, may they be granted the peace and strength they need to offer comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in the military, for all first responders, and for all who putting themselves in harm's way in order to serve the public and its needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as soon as possible, we may gather again to listen to God's word proclaimed and preached and participate fully in the liturgy of the Eucharist by receiving the body and blood of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they know our Lord's merciful love now and forever in his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity and so many opportunities to encounter the risen Lord and to believe and grow in faith in those who have encountered him so deeply that they have given their lives for him. May we not only be people of hope, the hope that Jesus and only Jesus can bring, but may we be a people who always look forward to coming together and being together in his name especially in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. During the presentation and preparation of gifts, please join in singing number 393. Open my eyes, number three, nine, three. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is and right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they and we acclaim. and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set. of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who have gathered in person and in internet to celebrate this Mass. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you, through whom you bestow upon the world and upon us all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. But, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. If only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. At this communion time, we invite you during this period to say your prayer spirit for spiritual communion with Jesus. I will offer that prayer for you to see and to pray at this time. Let us now stand in prayer. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few announcements, please. Uh, we don't have too much going on, obviously. Uh, for your consideration, but a couple of things. First, uh, we're sad that Deacon John and Nancy are moving uh, to Tennessee. Uh, they have sold their home and they will be uh, departing us in May. Uh, given the uncertain realities, we hope to have a gathering to show appreciation to them and to say farewell to them uh, sometime whenever it's uh, okay to do so. Uh, they said they'd be willing, they're only six hours away in Tennessee, to come back. Until then, if you would like to go ahead and give something, a, a card of thanks to him, appreciation, whatever, uh, we invite you to do it now. Either send it to the church by mail or drop it by the church. The church office is open uh, Monday through Friday from 8 to 12. Uh, and we'll leave the basket out there uh, in the office is not open so you can put it in there we want to show our appreciation for deacon john and nancy for their time here and their ministries uh, in serving god's people also the uh, strawberry person will be back on tuesday so i hope you'll come and get not only strawberries but he has other delicious produce to offer as well i think last week went well people drove on either side of the table uh, and seem to go much quicker that way than having to get out of your car. So plan to join us if you'd like uh, to drive through and get some delicious produce. Also, we're having a uh, prayer time of prayer in church always. The church is open uh, for you to come and pray at any time, but especially from 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon, we'll have Jesus present here on the altar in the monstrance for us to come and pray and uh, to uh, lift up to the Lord those who are suffering through the coronavirus and for an end to the pandemic as soon as possible, whatever other intentions you have, and to in being here and seeing Jesus hunger for Jesus in the day that you'll be able to receive him in his body and blood again. I know uh, you miss being here for Mass, we miss receiving communion, miss being together, and I hope you uh, aren't missing uh, opportunities to give your stewardship to the church. 
I'd say I miss uh, the collection uh, people coming around, the ushers, to do that. But some of you have been doing very well about coming to the church uh, and giving your stewardship in the uh, big wooden box that's in the narthex or sending it by mail or signing up online uh, our online service that you can do through the website uh, and to put in there what you'd like to give weekly or monthly. Uh, we certainly appreciate uh, your attention to this and uh, if you want to just, I pray, make up for it when we are able to gather, that certainly will be appreciated as well. The Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you all this day, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. As we go forth with his blessing, let us sing no number 565, The Lord of the Dance, verses three, 4 and 5. I dance on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. I'll lead you all wherever you may be. I will lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I left up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. Live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dancer.